Hi, this is Paula J uh, from Secure, uh, delivering another episode of Secure Hacks Weekly. Today's episode is uh, very cool because uh, today it's going to be delivered by Greg. I will try to show how to sign a code, how to get a certificate first, because it may be a commercial certificate or it may be your own certificate. There's nothing wrong with your own certificate. What will happen with your signed code if your certificate expires is also a pretty interesting topic. So we'll try to get the certificate, sign the code, verify those signatures and show how do they work and, and what we can do about this. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I have my virtual machine up and running and on the desktop I have my early cache utility, a utility written for some forensic purposes. And this utility is not digitally signed. It was written a long time ago. You can, so, you can see there is no digital signature over here. And interesting fact here is it not written, as you can spot by the icon, uh, in any of Microsoft uh, development uh, environments and still can be perfectly well signed without any problem. To have a digital signature, first we have to have a certificate for used for signing. It can be any certificate with the proper purpose. For example, I can run uh, PowerShell and then issue a command new self-sign certificate with the proper key usage um, and then cert sign and so on and so on. But such certificate will be next to be useless because it will be only trusted by myself. So well, it will verify if the file was not altered anyhow, but only by yourself. So is not the best approach. If you are signing a file for internal usage, like your own company utilities and so on, you can use uh, CA, your own certificate authority for this uh, purpose. To do this, you have to uh, manage templates. I will switch to uh, certificate authority over here. I will launch uh, my certificate authority console and under certificate templates, by default, there is no template about uh, code signing. It will load in a second. It has to be loaded from Active Directory. And now I can click, right click, manage, go to the templates and select code signing template, duplicate it and uh, apply my own name, CQ signing. and uh, go through other properties to verify uh, how I can uh, issue a certificate based on this template. If all those properties are uh, acceptable for me, of course, I can click OK. And I have this CQ uh, signing template being present. If I return to the Certificate Authority Console, I can uh, click New Certificate Template to issue and I can select CQ signing for code signing purposes, click OK. And now my certificate authority will issue um, certificates with the purpose of signing. If I return right now to my machine with the um, executable for, for being signed, I can exit from PowerShell, go to certificate management, cert MGR, and uh, ask for the certificate. You can see there is no certificate within the personal store and I can click all task, request new certificate and using this wizard, refer to my active directory, wait for the information about the certificate and obtain a list of certificates I can ask uh, my certificate authority uh, for the certificate. You can see CQ signing is present over here. I can click and click enroll. And after the enrollment, which should be successful at uh, in a couple of seconds, uh, you will see the certificate uh, will appear on the list. It means I have the code signing certificate uh, on my user account. And now I can use this certificate for the signing. Okay, so the status is succeeded. If I click finish under certificates, I can see certificate issued to administrator because I'm logged 
on as administrator with intended purpose code signing and is issued by my lab CA uh, right now. Okay, so how can I use this particular certificate for signing a, a binary file? I can use any of commercial tools, but uh, well, we are living with PowerShell, so it can be done in a smarter way, I can say. Let's launch PowerShell again. PowerShell and here, please do remember that PowerShell can access certificates like the files on the drive. So I can do get child item and do cert and now select current user or local machine of course is current user so current user my and then uh, I can uh, select the certificate this is this uh, certificate I have uh, on my machine. I can observe it, you can see it's freshly issued, of course I can access all his properties. And what I can do uh, is to assign this certificate and get child item into a, a PowerShell variable. So I will do $cert1 equals get child item and the path to the certificate and I have it. Uh, stored in the cert1 variable. What I have to do right now is to use a commandlet set authenticode signature and then specify parameters. The first one is about certificate and I can specify my variable cert1. Next one parameter is about file path and now I can specify on my desktop there is a rdcache.exe and that's actually all. You can see uh, the status is valid. If I right click on the rdcache, go to properties, you can see a couple of tabs more than previously, especially the digital signature. So you can have a name of the signer taken out of the certificate. You can see that I just the digest algorithm, which is not the most modern one, I can say, and should be not used. We can specify the algorithm uh, as a parameter for PowerShell commands. If I click on details, I will see details or of the certificate uh, uh, from the uh, certificate authority. Uh, this way of signing is working in an acceptable way, especially if you can view the certificate, you can see this is the certificate which is trusted, for example, within my environment, which is okay for many uh, internal usage uh, applications. But it's not the best approach uh, for the publicly available uh, code. Another thing about this, that this way of uh, signing uh, your stuff is about no timestamp over here, because here you do not have any timestamp. What does it mean? It means if the certificate is not valid, for example, his uh, validity expired, which was specified in the template, if I click into onto details again you can see in the, under properties of the certificate the validity period is for one year so after one year view certificate and is valid for one year and uh, if this time finishes this signature will be no longer valid because the certificate is no longer valid so it's pretty interesting uh, because we can imagine, for example, drivers uh, for our uh, devices being present in the operating system, being installed in the operating system, and the time uh, of the validity of the certificate is over. It means those drivers will not work. Of course, this is not a scenario you can observe in your operating system. If you verify the validity date for the certificate for your drivers, you can easily realize that some of your drivers have already your uh, certificate uh, after the expiration date because the certificate was valid at the moment of signing not at, at the moment of running or verifying the signature so for having a proof 
that certificate was valid at the, in the moment of signing, the only way of doing this is to use a special time stamping, providing trusted source of the time uh, for signing a certificate. For such purpose, I will switch to my uh, command line here. And here I have my early cache, which is not digitally signed yet. And I have my PFX, which is official uh, secure signing certificate. And I can try to use it for uh, signing with the time stamping uh, being present. So I will launch PowerShell. And uh, I can uh, do dollar cert two. Let's name it different way, even with another machine. Get PFX certificate because I will take the certificate not from my store but out of the PFX file. And the file is signsecureag.pfx. If I do not specify any password here, I will be prompted about password. And uh, now in the dollar cert two, I have my certificate being uh, stored with all the properties under subject and uh, so on. So right now I can use exactly the same command set authentic uh, signature, and I can specify uh, that certificate is cert two. And the file path is early cache. And the third parameter needed now, timestamp server is, for my case, will be HTTP, HTTP, TSA, start SSL.com slash timestamp. And right now I'm obtaining a stamp for the time using the certificate. If I go into properties of this file, I can use Explorer for this purpose. I can easily see under properties, I have digital signatures and you can see timestamp is being applied. And even if my certificate will expire after some time, it will expire in a uh, couple of months, as you can see, uh, in, in two years, um, this certificate will not have to be valid to have a file being digitally signed and in an acceptable and uh, trusted way. So as you could observe, s digitally signing any of your executable files. Uh, actually, there's a huge bunch of files uh, you can digitally sign, but it's most interesting about uh, your MSI files, about .exe and about .dll files, because those are spread uh, most widely. Uh, as you can see, it is not a rocket science. If you have a certificate, you can uh, digitally sign your stuff and uh, make it trusted by others, not only by you. You can easily verify if some uh, content was manipulated or not. Uh, the question may appear if it's useful for typical IT pros or maybe more for developers. Actually, I tried to explain, the, explain it in a way being useful for IT pros to make you, because IT pros are the main uh, set of our uh, viewers, our readers, uh, to have IT pros spreading this information to developers. So please go to your developers right now, ask them about code they are compiling and executable files they are uh, developing and try to establish a signing process and start signing your software, software right well, my advice is try to play with these uh, features on your own. Uh, it's very simple, as you can see. It's very useful. Uh, there's nothing harmful in signing your own code. So please try and, and see how it's working in the real life environment as well. You can also ask some questions because sometimes this uh, topic is not like very straightforward. 
So I will try to help you if you have any like practical issues with applying such techniques. Bye, see you next time.